Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about operating the behemoths in Battlefield 1. How to be most effective with them, how to keep them alive, and even how to kill them if you're on the other team. Now it's pretty rare that you get the opportunity to control a behemoth, whether it's the airship, the dreadnought, or the armored train. Once you get that opportunity, you kind of have to learn what's going on right away. Otherwise, you can potentially waste an incredibly useful asset for your team. So you want to make the most out of it. Let's begin with the Dreadnought. This is the rarest of the three behemoths because it only appears on two out of the nine maps. Foul Fortress and Empire's Edge, both in Conquest and Operations game modes. Now there's four seats on the Dreadnought. If you're lucky enough to get the first seat, you will be controlling the movement of the Dreadnought, but you will also be in control of some incredibly powerful cannons. Seat number two gives you control over two more cannons, and then seat number three and four give you anti-air turrets. Now the anti-air turrets are pretty important one for shooting down incoming aircraft the torpedo bomber can actually inflict pretty significant damage on your dreadnought but also the small ships that will come and attack you are very vulnerable to the anti-aircraft guns so if you're in one of these seats be sure to look around the ship in the water for any of the torpedo boats as you can potentially stop them from doing a huge amount of damage to your dreadnought now the biggest advantage of this behemoth is that it can inflict massive damage from pretty much all the way across the map you don't have to get the behemoth right up on the capture point or right next to the enemies. You can fire these guns all the way across the map and do a huge amount of damage. This is good because there's a lot of uh, fortress mounted defenses like field guns and large cannons that can fire back at the behemoth and basically you want to prevent this damage whenever possible. In fact if you're controlling the cannons you'll probably want to just take out some of these stationary field guns preemptively. People are probably going to be in them and it certainly pays off to take them out ahead of time before they start doing a huge amount of damage to your ship. Now if you're playing on Conquest or certain other operations maps, the Behemoth can actually get in closer and start to capture a point, which can be very valuable at certain points during the game. So if you're doing so, just be mindful of what can do a huge amount of damage to you and try and kill it before you kill anything else. Prioritize the enemy cannons as they will probably be the biggest culprits in taking out the Behemoth. Now when it comes to aiming the Dreadnought, it's actually pretty tricky because the map is so far zoomed out that you really don't have that much ability to be super precise. Basically you're just moving a little red dot around the mini map and hitting the fire button where you want your shots to land. Now it's not to say that it's hard to get kills with this but generally speaking this is more of a carpet bombing strategy as opposed to precision strikes. If your team's doing a good job of spotting the enemy, it'll make it that much easier to hit them where it hurts. If you have a friendly sniper on your team, ask them to shoot the flares out and that will definitely give you the data you need to rein in those shots. Also, if you don't click out of your shell camera, you can follow the shots all the way in and sort of use that as a way to determine where the enemy are, adjust your shot the next time, and hopefully get some more kills. Also, experiment with the destruction of the map. A lot of things don't seem destroyable to smaller explosives, but they won't hold up under the firepower of the Dreadnought. So experiment by hitting the fort in different areas on both maps, and you'll be surprised by just how much you can take down. Sometimes you'll even create new entrances for your teammates. As for killing the Dreadnought, if it's being used properly, this can be one of the harder ones to take out. The torpedo boat can be somewhat effective. If you stay in front of the Dreadnought, it makes it harder for the rear anti-aircraft guns to take you out, and the actual big cannons on the Dreadnought are not very good for hitting the torpedo boat. So stay in front of the Dreadnought, and that'll increase your odds of survival. It also makes the Dreadnought a smaller target to hit, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Let's move on to the airship. The pilot of the airship probably has a huge say in just how long this vehicle is gonna stay alive. It's very important to do all you can to take out the anti-aircraft guns. Now as the pilot, you have the ability to drop bombs on enemy targets, and it might be tempting to go for the biggest clumps of infantry right away, or maybe take out some of the tanks, but I have to say, if you wanna keep this thing up in the air, go for the anti-aircraft installations. It's not hard to find them, just look at where the anti-aircraft fire is coming from, fly in that direction and drop a bomb on them. The bomb will actually destroy the entire anti-aircraft cannon and that way you can keep this thing up in the air for a lot longer. If every airship pilot did this right at the start, their chances of keeping this behemoth alive most of the round, if not the entire round, would go up drastically. I keep seeing airship pilots misusing this behemoth and it doesn't even survive 
for one capture point session during a game of operations because it's just getting destroyed by the anti-aircraft turrets. Now, of course, tanks can hit you as well. They can angle themselves on the side of cliffs. Infantry can do it, but nothing is going to cause as much damage consistently as the anti-aircraft guns. Your gunner should be able to deal with a lot of the infantry threats, and the gunners on top of the airship are also very good at taking out other airplanes that are coming to deal damage to you. Speaking from someone who spent a lot of time trying to take down the airship, the most effective thing by far is those AA guns, so take them out if you're the pilot. Now in maps like Montegrappa, they also have some mountainside cannons. These can do good damage to you over time as well, so take those out after you take out the anti-aircraft guns or take them out on the way to taking out the anti-aircraft guns. Again, it'll lessen the damage against you. Once you've eliminated the main threats against the airship, then you can park this thing over some capture points and really help your team progress on to the next set of objectives. It can capture flags both in Conquest and the Operations game mode, and rather than going with your troops and helping them cap a flag, I'd recommend going for one of the flags that your troops are not close to. It'll be a great way to take one of those points on your own as the airship and let your troops take the other two points. Usually the attacking team on Operations is met with a three point capture process that's very hard to do unless the behemoth takes one of those points on its own. Now I already mentioned that the top two gunners are great for taking out enemy aircraft. The bottom gunners can also take out enemy aircraft if they get close enough, but they're also really good at taking out soft targets. Infantry targets, they can do damage to uh, heavy armor targets as well. It'll take them longer. But if you see an anti-air cannon that's up and it's not shooting at you while you're in one of the bottom gunners, take out that AA gun. Otherwise, it's going to take you out. It can kill you while you're in the gunner seat. So even as the gunners, it's still really important to remember target prioritization. Go for what can kill you and deal the most damage first, and then go for the easy kills. Now, if you're fighting against the airship, you definitely want to try and find an anti-aircraft cannon and once you get in it focus on the gondolas that basically have line of sight on you so either the front or the rear gondola you can not only kill the gunners straight out of the gondola but if you do enough damage to it it'll destroy and fall off the airship it will respawn after some time but it'll give you a little bit of breathing room to focus on other parts of the airship if you like if you don't have an anti-aircraft cannon airplanes can do damage to the airship tanks can do damage to the airship uh, properly placed cannons on the ground can do damage to the airship so basically everything and anything you can get your hands on and of course remember to focus on those gondolas as they will kill you if you don't. Lastly, we have the armor train. Now one tip to getting into the train or even the driver's seat of the train is to spawn in on foot when you know the armor train is gonna come in, say on an operations game mode, run up to the train and hold E to get into it. You can't spawn directly on the train for whatever reason for a certain period of time from the spawn menu. So you can actually do it on foot and it'll give you a little bit of a jump start on your competition. Now the driver's seat in the train is pretty darn important, but all the seats in the train are very important and everybody has to really be doing their job in order to keep this behemoth alive. This is probably the hardest behemoth to keep alive for a long period of time because it is technically on rails. You can't take it in a direction that the enemy is not gonna see coming. They can put mines on the track, they can mortar it from behind cover, they can do a lot of things to cause a lot of damage to you in a short period of time. They can even run up to you uh, on horseback or drive past you on a Jeep, throw dynamite on you. There's plenty of stuff that can absolutely obliterate this train. Now, of course, some of the bigger threats are things like field cannons, and you want to deal with those as soon as possible. The driver of the train probably has the best weapon on the train, which is an insanely powerful cannon. Very similar to one on the Dreadnought, but instead of firing three at once, you just fire one at a time. But you can be very precise with it, uh, taking out mortar positions, field guns, and even tanks. This is one of those behemoths that's going to benefit a lot from working with other infantry on the ground. People who can spot for you, launch threat flares, anything that can help you be more precise with that artillery cannon. You can also completely obliterate buildings with the artillery cannon on this, uh, allowing your team to push up. If there's one building with like four or five guys in it, you can blow up the whole freaking building take them all out and your team can push up and take the objective. On larger conquest maps like Sinai Desert, this train can be very useful for quickly moving back to get your gimme point closest to your spawn or moving 
all the way to the enemy team's side of the map and getting their gimme. It doesn't do as well when you drive it right into the middle of the action. It's going to take a huge amount of damage when you do that and it won't last long. So as much fun as it can be, uh, unless you have the world's best gunners that aren't going to let anybody get close to you, you really won't last long enough. Now I've already done a video talking about the different positions in the train. They're all fairly self-explanatory. There's a machine gun, there's an explosive round uh, gun on there, there's a anti-aircraft gun, there's a straight up cannon for taking out armored targets or just blowing up buildings. There's plenty of stuff on this train to kill things. All gunners need to be swiveling around, looking at all angles all the time, and protecting the train as best as possible. Again, target prioritization is the best thing you can do. Take out the biggest threats first. As for killing the train, I found the HE mortar to be one of the best things for dealing a huge amount of damage and not exposing yourself directly to the train's line of sight. Uh, also the tank hunter land ship does a huge amount of damage to this train. If you can get a driver and two side gunners on that tank and hit it from afar, uh, you will just chew through the health of this behemoth. Anyway, I hope this video allows you guys to get the most out of your behemoth runs when you spawn on them, or if your team's getting obliterated by a behemoth, maybe it'll help you figure out some ways to kill it better. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.